Hello and welcome to today's video about communication protocols in digital substations. This is Power Grid Expert, the YouTube channel about the distribution grid. So let's start and see what we are talking about. We are talking about the so-called distribution grid. So in the whole um, structure of energy supply grids, we are talking about the voltage levels between 1 and 50 kV. And especially here, we're talking about the so-called substations, which are uh, these small little houses you see on the, on the corner or on the side of the street. And inside these substations, there is um, a medium voltage switch gear. There's, of course, the transformer, the low voltage compartment, and so on. And in the digital substation, we have much more measurement units, control, um, uh, remote control functions, RTUs, um, remote terminal units, modems, and so on. And all these devices are connected normally to the SCADA system. And uh, to have this communication properly, um, there are different communication protocols which are in use here. Some of them are unique for the utility market, um, others are not, and we will have a look at all of them. So what is most common at the moment? We have to um, differ between um, communication protocols within the substation and um, communication protocols that are used for, to communicate to SCADA systems, to servers, um, and so on. So we will start um, with the protocols um, within the substation. First of all, still set, although it's a very old protocol, um, Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, RTU is a serial protocol, TCP, as you might have guessed, um, is TCP IP based. We have um, IAC um, 104 and 101. 101 is a serial protocol, 104 is um, TCP IP based. This is a protocol specifically um, standardized for the utility market, as well as IAC um, 61850. Also, this is newer than the 104 um, and goes a bit further than um, in the specification than 104. Um, more of those differences we will see later in this video. To communicate um, to the SCALA system, we again have the IC104 and 101, and this was the original idea of using this protocol to communicate between the RTU and the SCALA system. Um, the um, com competitor protocol, so to say, DNP3, is pretty much similar to the 104 and 101. Um, in my personal opinion, um, the differences are marginal, um, though other people might have other opinions here. A relative um, new protocol in the application for utilities is MQTT. Um, we will also have a look at that. So let's start with Modbus. Um, pretty much an old protocol um, and still in use um, in, in lots of uh, substations. The Modbus, uh, we're talking mainly about Modbus RTU here. This is a serial protocol. So what's, what's the most important stuff to know about this protocol? First of all, it's a serial protocol with a polling mechanism, which means there is one master in the bus and there are the slaves. Um, the slaves themselves cannot do anything by themselves. All happens here by the master. The master pulls each registers of each slave and he, do it, uh, he, he does it um, sequentially, which means he starts with the first device in the bus and the first register. Then he asks for the second one, third one for the and so on until he reaches the end of that um, first slave and then he gets to the, goes to the second slave and so on and so on until he reaches the last slave and the last register of the last that last slave and that takes time 
Um, the more units are here, the more registers are here. Um, it is um, remarkable a time delay, um, even like we're talking about seconds, um, which means there is no real time timestamp. There is actually no timestamp at all specified in Modbus, um, which um, makes it, well, let's say you, you have to know that um, in the substations, if we talk about Modbus, normally it's pulling about status uh, statuses are um, already um, or, or, media, or measurement values that are not so important um, in regards of, of a timestamp. So that's okay. Um, fault indicators, measurement devices, and so on. Speak 104, which makes it in configuration um, more flexible. So the biggest differences are for 104 in comparison to Modbus. It is it it um, offers the possibility uh, for the slaves to send spontaneous messages. The master does not have to pull continuously, um, which keeps the communication um, on low data. Um, so we can specify here that the device sends a message in case of a fault, in case of a measurement value changed over a certain percentage and only then we retransmit that information to the SCADA system. There is only one complete poll in the very beginning when the connection is made, then the master checks one time um, each slave and asks for all registers available. 104 um, offers timestamps, which makes it um, great to sort um, them in a timely manner after, for example, a fault um, event. Um, and those timestamps are, um, let's say, close to uh, real time. And as I said in the beginning here, um, with the slave speaking 104, there's actually no reason why you could not connect those devices directly to the SCADA systems without an RTU. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind is um, everything that applies to the RTU in um, in in terms of um, data safety has of course has to be applied here on on those slaves as well. DMP three is actually the the com competitor product to um, IEC one hundred four. Um, and IC 101. Um, in my personal opinion, the differences are not so huge, um, but what we can say IC 104, 101 is more common in Europe and DMP3 is more common in America and the rest of the world is sharing somehow both protocols. Um, it's also, it also delivers spontaneous messages, um, spontaneous transmission of information. Um, it is said that DNP3 handles um, low data rates and even interruptions of the communications um, a bit better than 104. And also here, if your uh, slave devices speak uh, DNP3 directly, there is no reason why you could not directly connect them to your SCADA system. MQTT um, is pretty new in the in the um, environment of um, utility companies. Um, the thought behind it is that in an intelligent substations substation you have a load of measurement values, and um, the guys in the SCADA center, their uh, SCADA system, they are responsible um, that the light does not go off, so to say. Um, they look for faults, they look um, to switch the switches in cases, and they want to get only critical information. Load values is not a critical information, so um, some utilities want to split the way here and say the measurement values might be good for operation, might be good for planning, but um, the SCADA uh, uh, center already has enough to do. So we want to split the information. 
we keep our DMP3 or 104 connection um, to the SCADA for fault information, for critical information, and the measurement values are collected by another system, by another data channel, and they end up um, on a data server and their operation um, planning, whoever wants to see those informations can easily access them. MQTT is originally made for IoT communications, and that means um, it handles very well low data rates and handles very well high latency times of the slaves, which makes it ideal um, also for that um, not time critical collection of um, measurement values in the intelligence substation. IEC 61850 is um, actually quite a long time uh, specified, but hardly used in the digital substation. It's used in the power transformer stations. It's used mainly for communication in between um, protection relays. And what are the differences? Uh, first of all, it's not only a protocol, it specifies more. It specifies also the data structure. It specifies um, logic nodes, which um, contain all the information, for example, of um, a, a certain protection relay, which makes it very well um, um, suitable for um, those applications, um, but maybe less interesting for other applications. Um, it also offers the in the, the connection of CT, um, of um, values of CTs, of PTs, um, digitally transmitted to the protection relay. Of course, there's um, timestamps here, and there are also so-called goose telegrams. Goose telegrams are real-time communication between, for example, different protection relays. As I said, it's not only a protocol, you can also specify much more with it. It's actually a complete data model, um, including communication. Um, some people say that makes it at the end more easy to apply it to a new power transformer station. Um, but for sure, in my experience, at least at the beginning, you need a bit more time to understand how it works. That's it. That was um, a quick overview about the most important communication protocols for the digital substation. I hope you liked this video. If so, please follow my YouTube channel, Power Grid Expert. If you have any further questions to those protocols or in general to the distribution grid, please feel free to contact me. My contact data is below. Thank you for watching.